I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson, and oh my goodness, this is going to be so much fun. We are with Caroline Ellis from The Bugaloos, which was one of my absolute favorite shows, uh, Sid and Marty Croft, and she is in Spain. And Caroline, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm all worried about you. I just hope you've got your thermals on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We do. The snow starts to melt, so we're, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. How is it in Spain? Well, uh, we're in winter here, okay. but winter here is not quite the same as what you're having. Today, it's been about 18 degrees, the weekend 1920. Uh, so the temperature here in the winter can vary anything from nine or 10 degrees to 23 or 24 degrees. The, te the climate here, I must just tell you briefly, okay. is very similar to Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So, of course, when we were working and living in Los Angeles, you sort of get accustomed to the, to the climate. And then afterwards, when going back to the UK, I always hated the English climate. climate. I always hated it. And I always thought as a child, well, I'm going to marry somebody who's from a, from a warmer country, so I don't have to put up with this horrible cold weather. I've always felt the cold. That never happened, actually, the marrying to, some, marrying to somebody from a warmer climate. But of course, I decided much later on in life that, uh, you know, moving to Spain and the climate here, obviously the climate is different in different parts of Spain, the same as the USA. But uh, the climate here is so like California. Uh, the temperature, when I look at the temperatures in LA and the temperatures here, very often they're very similar, summer or, or winter. In general, their winters are a bit warmer. But I think at the moment their temperatures have dropped, dropped down because of that cold uh, freeze that you're having down from, from Canada. Even their temperatures have dropped down to, to about 19 or 20 as well. Anyway, I'm sure you didn't come on here to talk about the weather. No, so. but, no, it's fascinating. And, you know, this is obviously not typical Texas weather. I mean, we haven't had yeah. this kind of snow and ice uh, in over 10 years. Terrible, terrible. So, well, that's a change, I presume. So. Yes, yes. So you were in the UK when you auditioned, or well, actually, I guess, when you started your, your acting career. Yeah, well, I started my acting career as uh, I went to, I went to a theatr theatrical school when I was seven years of age. Oh, uh, wow. Started young, but I went really for the dancing, for the ballet. I wanted to be a ballet dancer. And the, the convent that I had been at, did, they stopped doing the, the classes. So I had got through one or two, you know, very young uh, little exams with honours. And then my mother decided perhaps, you know, I'd be better off going to a school that did uh, more serious dancing classes. So off I went to this theatrical school, which was not that far away from, from where we live. And uh, being a theatrical school, of course, they would be casting uh, also many London productions and, and from abroad um, for children, young actors, and you could stay at the school until school leaving age and then stay on for another two years as what they used to call a student and carry on with your studies, with your exams, drama, dancing and everything. Um, and that was me. And I... I was very lucky, I mean, as a child, I did one or two modeling jobs and things like that. But in England at that time, you couldn't appear on the stage until you were 12 years of age. That was the law. And then it was for only for so many weeks of the year, etc. They were very, very strict on regulations for obvious reasons. And then when I was 11, uh, but I was going to be 12 uh, that year, I auditioned for a show at the London Palladium um as uh what they called the ada foster babes ada foster was theatrical school they did them every year and i'm happy to say i i was chosen as one of the babes and that's really where it all started so i appeared in the theater for for many years 
I did a few television commercials, but from the Palladium, uh, that was for six months. Then I went into The Sound of Music and uh, played Louisa. We all know, we all know The Sound of Music. And that was very good um, professionally for experience and for doing harmonies on stage with other people. So that was, it really sort of progressed from there. And then uh, obviously, well, the commercials continued. I continued doing modeling. So I've, I appeared in various theatrical productions in, in London. Uh, I was very lucky in that way. And then uh, of course, Along came the, 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 the Crofts looking for a cast for the casting of the Babaloos. Well, you know, I thought, ah, this is all in the newspapers. It's all a load of rubbish. They know who they're going to have. They've already decided what's the point of going along. But it was in all the newspaper, a big splash. You've probably heard about this before. Uh, I wasn't going to go along. And my agent hadn't should, really should have done anything because they hadn't contacted agents for people to go along to audition. It was just sort of like open auditions for anybody anywhere could go along. And of course they were getting thousands of people going along. And my friend um, said to me, oh, come on Carol, let's go along just for a laugh. I said, oh God, yeah, but we're gonna have to queue up. We haven't got an appointment. It's going to be a waste of time. They already know who they're going to have. Right. Uh, just a publicity stunt. So anyway, she dragged me along. And that was at uh, EMI in London. And uh, of course, when we arrived, um, there were loads of people outside queuing up. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm going home again. This is ridiculous. It's just crazy. Uh, she said, no, 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 come along, come along. Anyway, we gave our name because they'd come out and take your name and, and details and everything. So we stayed in there, masses of people, and this has been going on every day for, for about a week. Uh, because I felt because so there are other shows, right? HR, Puff and Stuff, and Sid and Marty Croft was a big deal at this time. Yes. It, creating this show. HR, Puff and Stuff had been very successful in England as well. Okay. Um, but I suppose because HR, Puff and Stuff at that time appealed, appealed to, much younger people. I mean, right. I, I'm, I was, how old was I? I was 19 then. So I wasn't really watching all the children's programs. I was watching a few because many of my uh, student colleagues or friends or whatever were, were in them in TV series, this, that and the other. And, um, but uh, it wasn't something that I was really, you know, deeply into. So yes, I'd heard of Puff and Star. Um, but, but I you don't didn't know, know of that. Sid and, and Marty Croft. Well, I don't know that I ever watched. Oh, okay, so you just knew it was a big deal. <laughs> By that time, I But you just knew them. that this audition was a big deal. It certainly was. Anyway, eventually we, we went in at about 12 at the time in a semicircle. Sid and Marty Croft were both there. And uh, we were asked to, one by one, without any music or anything, just to sing a song. And then if they were interested, they'd ask one or two to stay behind. Well, obviously they asked me to stay behind. So then I had to wait. They came out and took my name and details. And then later on, I had to go back in. And they said, will you come back tomorrow? And it went on basically for a whole week. Meanwhile, they were getting the numbers down. And then near the end, they were asking us to go down in the evening uh, to take us out to dinner and to chat, to get to know us. I think to get to know our characters that we weren't going to, you know, be up to no good the whole time. It was too much of an investment. Right. Uh, I was actually working up the road at that time, uh, doing a, a fashion show um, in the Dorchester Hotel. I think one of them was staying in the Dorchester Hotel, which was quite funny. So I was doing a fashion show uh, that week in the Dorchester, you know, for young, young fashion and everything. So I was dashing from that, then back to the audition and the, and the crofts and then, and, you know, going back home quickly changing, then going out to dinner. It was a hectic time, but obviously <laughs> I got it in the end. Yeah. And had it, you ever, it, had it, you ever done auditions with singing? With who? Singing a song. Was that new for oh, you? Yeah. For the oh. sound of music. Well, right, right, right. And I had to sing for that. And then for other musicals I'd done, I'd done one or two other musicals. 
so yes, you always, that's the first thing we ask you to do when you audition for a musical on the stage is you go on the stage one by one. Okay, can you sing a song? Thank you, we'll let you know, you know, and you think, yeah, yeah, don't call us, we'll call you. But, to be, right. but it, it's, you know, that's how it is. It's tough, really, and it's sometimes heartbreaking because you get, you may be asked to go back two or three times for like a theatre show or whatever, and then you don't hear anything more. And you think, oh, you know, is that it? Nobody tells you, not always, sometimes they do say, they contact your agent or whatever and say, you know, thank you very much, but we won't be, we won't be needing you. Um, but in general, you never hear anything. So when you don't hear anything, you know you haven't got it. Right. Uh, when you do hear something, then it's usually to go back for another audition, for a recall, to sing another song or, or to read a script, whatever. Um, and it, it's hard and many people couldn't take it because it's tough. You know, it can really tear you up inside yeah. if you go for lots of auditions and then you never get anything, which happened to a lot of my colleagues, obviously. Uh, happened to me. I wouldn't get everything I went for. Right. Uh, and it, it, it hurts. It's tough because you work hard, you build up your, your energy, your rehearsing, your, you know, it's part of your experience and, and a part of your studies as well, if you like, when you're still at school. But it's tough. You, it, it, it's not always fun. I have to say. I mean, I've got a younger brother, Christopher, and he he was younger than me by a few years, and he went to the same drama school. Okay. He did a lot of film work. He actually he was actually in a film with Marlon Brando. Wow. So yeah. So uh, when I went came back from the states, he was filming with Michael Winner, the director. I was invited up there by Michael Winner. Met Marlon Brando. Christopher was was filming as a child, as a child actor. And uh, anyway, he did this film and, and everything, but he only lasted a couple of years up. He couldn't take it. He hated it in the end. All the auditioning, the heartbreak, the disappointment, the disappointments you get are, are enormous. Right. But if you're lucky enough to get a, a part in something, well then obviously your career hopefully will get off the ground and little by little, you start building up your, your uh, experience and, and working with different people. Then I found in, in the theatre, especially in the theatre, uh, one or two of the directors or producers and the film and television, they get to know your work. And if they like your work, then they ask you, they keep you in mind for something in the future. So I got a phone call one day um, I think, yeah, this was after the Bugaloos, and I'd worked uh, with a, on, in the theatre with a, with a film director. He, he, sadly, he's passed away now. He was a very, very big film director, Val Guest. He'd worked a lot in Hollywood, in the UK and everything. But anyway, I did a, a theatre production, and he liked my work and whatever. Then uh, he asked me to, a film, uh, to appear in a film, and then after that, uh, I was just at home. I wasn't, I hadn't, I can't remember whether I had anything lined up or not, but anyway, I wasn't working. And I got a call from my agent that said, uh, uh, you've got to go to Poland tomorrow. I said, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this was the business. You get a phone call that the next day or that day telling you, sending you off somewhere. And they said, yeah, you're doing the Sherlock Holmes in, per in, uh, in Poland. I said, oh, my God. Uh, so anyway, I had to get everything ready. You always have your passport ready just right. in case it happens. So off I went to Poland and I did, um, which was fascinating. Oh, uh, I did a, a Sherlock Holmes in, in Poland. And it was because Val Guest had asked for me to play this part in the Sherlock Holmes uh, production. So, you know, that's, that's the business. But my younger brother, he couldn't take it. He hated it. He hated all the disappointments. And he gave up the business and went off around the world instead. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. difficult, it's a difficult business. And, and it is. you learn that no doesn't sometimes it's just because you don't fit the part. It's not a personal thing. No. It's not exactly what they're looking for. Exactly, exactly. And you can be you can be the best actress in the world or the worst actress in the world. Right. Uh, and you can get a part, especially back then, 
you know, you had to be a bit of a dolly bird. Uh, I did a, a, a TV in England with a, a friend of mine, uh, Joanne, and she said at that time, all we had, we just had to be dolly birds. If you were a dolly bird, then the chances were you were going to get some work, whether it was Benny Hill or Doctor Who or, or whatever. You had to be a bit of a dolly bird. And of now course, explain, explain that to us, dolly bird. A dolly bird is a young, attractive, <laughs> uh, female, uh, perhaps shall we say rather, rather nice looking, attractive, <laughs> whatever. But people couldn't see, casting directors very often at that time anyway, couldn't see beyond that. Mm -hmm. They couldn't see you being able to play a certain a character part right. or whatever. Uh, and so if you were, you were going for a part, uh, I won't mention her name because she was, she was very well known. And uh, I remember they were casting for a film. I was up for it and colleagues of mine, and this particular actress was, was up for it. And uh, very often you don't know what they're looking for until you go for the audition. Then they give you a script and you read the information five minutes beforehand and then you're in to read the script. And uh, sometimes they, they give you a little bit of background on it. Sometimes they don't say anything. So anyway, this, this actress, she went in and they said, no, thank you, you're not right. And off she went, off she went. So she had a very good, uh, well, she had a very good agent, put it that way. So what she did was, she then just turned up. She went and changed her clothes. She went very sexy looking, uh, in a, like a, a sexy schoolgirl. She completely changed her look. She went in for the audition looking like that and she got the part. <laughs> so because they couldn't see beyond what was right. in front of them, not always, not right. always. But once people get to know your work and that you are able to do this and that and the other, then they'll ask for you back, even if it's something completely di different. And I'm happy to say that that, had hap that did happen to me on one or two occasions, I'm very happy to say. But at the end of the day, I was still a dolly bird. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm so curious, you get the Bugaloos, and they're explaining this show. What, what were your thoughts when you found out you know, what this was about? Well, it, it was mind-blowing. I mean, let's face it, it was mind-blowing. And uh, they showed us when we were uh, near the end of the auditioning, and then once we got the part, they showed us the, the, the sketches of the Tranquility Forest and the characters with wings and whatever. They showed us that. Not first thing at the auditioning. They right. didn't have that. But later on, when they were getting it down to to uh, a few of us. Then they showed us a, a bit more detail and that helped give us, give us a, a, better, a better idea. I mean, I didn't know that I was supposed to look like a fairy when I went for the audition. <laughs> I don't suppose the boys did either. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, when, you, when we started seeing, um, they had like a, a catalog, a book of all these different uh, cartoons and sketches and drawings. I mean, absolutely fantastic, really, really fantastic. Then you start to get a picture of, of what they're going to do. But the real, the real surprise was when, we, when we'd gone out to Los Angeles and we walked into the, into, the, into the studio and we saw Tranquility Forest for real. You can't imagine that just from a, from a drawing because there were no photos or anything like that. And it was just magical. It was just wonderful. I mean, talk about a, a mind-blowing stage set. It was just incredible. It was really, really magical. And it, we all just went, <laughs> wow. Because it, it was just, a very big production, right? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. We were next door to Lucille Ball. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so when we weren't being used, okay, she was very, very tough. She was a tough lady, and she wouldn't let anybody in, in her, in her, um, in her, what do you call it? Her, studio. Her studio. Yeah, her set. Yeah. Uh, so when she was working, when she was rehearsing, when she was rehearsing, she was up on her high chair, 
and everybody else was in a lower chair. You know, she, she was the boss. Um, I never spoke with her, but apparently, yeah, very professional. Well, you can imagine her. I mean, her shows were, were incredible. They were fantastic and lasted for decades. Um, and uh, so we used to sneak in there and just stand quietly watching what was going on uh, until somebody came and tapped us on the shoulder and said, oh, you want it back in, in your studio. So off we flew back again, you know, to carry on. But uh, yeah, Tranquility Forest, the setting was, was just magical. It was unbelievable. Really, really lovely. So, so yeah, great fun. Great fun. Well, I, I can't, it's, it hasn't left my head since I knew that we were going to get to do this, singing the song, you know, the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> the bugaloos, the bugaloos, they're in the air and everywhere, flying oh, wow. Yeah, it's a song that just sticks with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that was the opening, the opening song, wasn't it, with the credits? And yes. then we all sort of flew up and showed our face in front of you all. Um, it's amazing because on my Facebook uh, page, I'm on Facebook, um, and okay, I have friends, fans, if you like, from, sure. from the UK. But the majority are from, um, from America, I mean, when you think about it, that's 50 years ago. Right. And they all remember it. And they rem remember so much detail. It's incredible. They remember things that I can't remember. <laughs> um, and, of course, now with internet and everything, and, you know, it's, it's just amazing. And uh, one of the songs, uh, we released the, the record for a friend. Uh, and on the B side was um, uh, The Senses of Our World, which was a, so a solo song, which right. I love that, I still do. But when I looked on YouTube, it had about 138,000 viewings or, or something. And you think, Christ almighty, excuse me, you think, goodness me, yeah. uh, wow, that's absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, no, it's, it is, it's magical. It, and so many, so many people write to me and say how much it meant to them because they were not happy as children, but the show brought them away from all that and, you know, just right, lightened up their lives a, a bit every Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, it just brings back such good memories. And I think yeah. it's in your life. I, I was telling several of my friends about this interview and my, my best friend who I've known since high school, uh, before high school, I said, uh, I'm going to have Caroline Ellis from the Bugaloos. And he goes, the Bugaloos, the Bugaloos. I mean, <laughs> like we, I didn't have to say anything. He did the whole song perfectly. And then, yeah. you know, it's incredible, so, isn't it? It's yeah. absolutely mind blowing. Uh, but it's lovely, absolutely lovely. And I'm really, I'm really proud to have been part of it. It's just a shame that we didn't do more. Right. Like, it's not that we want to, we did want to. But circumstances didn't let it happen, you know. So that's life. So you move on to the sure. on to the next. Thing. But I'm still in contact with, especially Little John uh, and Big John on Facebook. Wayne sort of became a bit of a, a recluse, but his sister uh, joins in on on our chats. <clears throat> and occasionally, love it. occasionally we do reunions. We've had one or two before before Zoom came along and, and this sort of thing, we did a tele, a tele conference. This is going back many, many years uh, by the guy who set it up, Bill Ung, who did our website. Now, of course, websites, the website is still there. Right. But of course, now with Facebook, people can contact you directly on right. Facebook if they want to and, and look at all the, all the past information. But it is, it's lovely, absolutely lovely that did people you, have such happy and, and good memories of it. Did you have any idea when you were doing it that all these years later, it was gonna affect people in such a positive way? Yeah, yeah, I mean, but when you listen to the words and the words of the music of the songs and everything, uh, it's all very, very positive. And the show was a, a positive show. It, it was meant to be for children. But we know that a lot of adults as well tuning in. <laughs> we know that the children's parents and they just thought, oh my goodness, you know, what have they, what have they 
been doing here. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, it was. It, it's lovely. It really is lovely. It is. Um, I actually sent. I have a friend who did a a blog uh, of another friend of mine, and he he lives in Florida, and uh, he remembers the the bugaloos. Um, but he had contacted me about something else that I had appeared in. And what, did I have any photographs? Can I send information, some questions, etc., etc.? Anyway, we started talking, and he said, "Oh, you you were joining the Bugaloos?" I said, "Yeah," because he's he's American. Right. He said he said he wasn't born back then, but he still knew about it. He still knew it, of course, on YouTube and and DVDs and all and everything. So anyway, would you believe, I, he asked me, he said he wanted to, to buy one of the DVDs of the, of the shows. Uh, but he said, you know, they're asking such ridiculous prices on eBay and everything and uh, whatever. So I had a spare one. So I sent him, sent him one and it arrived yesterday <laughs> to him in Florida. I said, well, for goodness sake, don't go and watch all the episodes all in one go or you'll go crazy. <laughs> No, 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 no. But you know, even even now, people still want to watch it, still want to listen to the music or see the see the program. But that's the magic of uh, technology, isn't it? Yeah. Now things are timeless, and that show certainly is timeless. You know, you can show it to your children; they can show it to their children, and it still has that magic aura about it. It it really is. It really is timeless, and it, it's so funny with kids entertainment you were doing you guys figured out something way before all these shows which was which was using songs in the show i think that was one of the reasons it was so big is the music yeah. i think the yeah. kids love the music and love singing. i yeah. know the songs yeah uh i'm trying to think what other shows were on at that time where you had well you had the monkeys and before. i was wondering was the monkeys before yeah, the so the Boogaloo's kind of came from yeah. the, the monkeys a little bit. Yeah, the monkeys were before. In fact, um, they were when we went to Los Angeles. They were hugely popular then already. Okay. And uh, and uh, what's his name? Um, ah, the singer, the main oh, singer. Uh, oh, oh goodness, I know. What's his name? Oh God, that's crazy. Anyway, yeah, he came. It was uh, Davy Jones. Davy Jones, thank you. Davy Jones came up because we were living in North Hollywood. So he, he came up to, to see us. He knew Big John as well because okay. Big John had always been involved with the, the London music, with the London music uh, crowd and everything. So, yeah, no, they were already big when we just, we hadn't even started filming the Bugaloos, I don't think, or we were filming at the time. So, yeah, uh, but of course they were a pop group doing a mad mad uh, series if right. you like whereas we were uh, a series with music that was the difference i think we weren't a pop group we were well i think well, they were put together as well weren't they they were manufactured yes yes they were um as we were so anyway uh david was great he was giving us lots of advice <laughs> and everything and he had been with, not my agent in England, but with a, another agent in London. So, you know, everybody knew everybody else sort of thing. So the friends of his were friends of mine, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, he was great. He was loved. You know, it's just so sad he's not with us anymore. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, but apart from that, it was a lot of cartoons, wasn't it, at that yeah, time? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, which were, was great, which was lovely. But there's so, something yeah. about the live action, I think, that people really respond to. Yes, yeah. And of course, uh, the Vagaloos was total fantasy. Right. It was like, oh my goodness. Uh, the monkeys, for instance, were live. They were in the street, they were in the countryside, they were here, dry, you know, and all the rest of it. But the Vagaloos were in another planet. They were just somewhere else. Uh, they could have been in Pluto, you know, right. for all. And it was just like mind blowing. And here we were in, in, in another world with this mad, crazy, bad person, you know, up to no good, up to mischief. And these four characters trying to, trying to do, 
you know, make the world a better place for everybody. So, so yeah, magic, magic. No, they don't do programs like that anymore. Well, they don't, and I, I wish they did. I, I think the fantasy of is what people loved, and it's funny you said the bad person because that was Martha Ray. You yeah. had Martha Ray and Billy Barty on that show, which yeah. were pretty well known at the time. Yes, they were. They were in America. Martha Ray was well known in, was quite well known in England because she'd done all the Bob Hope films and, and other things. A very funny lady, very nice lady. Uh, Billy Barty, I don't think he was really, if you'd said the name in England at that time, not many people would have, would have known it. Um, but of course, he was well known. He's a, he, he had appeared in goodness knows how many, how many productions all, all the time. Another lovely person, a really lovely person, and uh, and he was a great drummer. Huh? He was a really? really good drummer. Oh yeah, he and John would disappear, and you'd have to go and find them. Hey, John, John, Billy, where are you? <laughs> you need it. Yeah, he was a really good drummer. So John will tell you all about that, better than I will. But, uh, but a lovely person. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. So Martha Ray, that was such a kind of crazy character that she, because there's a fine right, line, right? When you're playing an evil person on a kid's show, you, you can't go too evil. No, you find so it's, them a, it's a tricky, yeah, it's a tricky, tricky role to play. Yeah, yeah. Well, she made it, she made it uh, a c comedy part. And of course, you know, she was like a comedian as well. Right. So, um, and with that mad outfit, uh, it, it was just great. It was just great. Maybe if the very, very youngsters, maybe the very, very little ones did get a bit frightened at first. Um, you know, I don't know. That I don't know. But you couldn't, you know, she was just so insane. You couldn't be frightened of her. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, she, she just wanted to sing and have my voice <laughs> or whatever. She, she just wanted to be a big star as well, in, in a way. So, oh, she was lovely. She was great. Yeah, she did that character very, very well by bringing the humor into it. If she had played it as, a, as an evil person, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, and I think she was one of my favorites as, as well as everyone on that show, I think, for that reason. You, yeah, you kind of knew were... she was the bad person, but it, it didn't feel that way. No, exactly, exactly. She made it very, very light and, and entertaining. She was super, yeah. So yeah, yeah. what was it like for you when they told you you, know, you were a character that was going to be kind of a, a fairy, as you say, and, and be flying? What was it like? Yeah, what was it like to, to know that you had to play a character that, that flew? That <laughs> well, uh, I don't think it was, I, I don't know. I was just so thrilled. You know, I suppose, I suppose when, you're, when you're at drama school or whatever, uh, especially at that time, now it's quite, you know, it happens a lot. English actors go to America, America sure. goes to but at that time, no, it was very rare, apart from you had to have visas, work permits, and all the rest of it, uh, which you probably still do now. But uh, in general, you, you couldn't go to America and just try and look for a job or whatever. You had to have the contract to go over and all the rest of it. But it was like everybody's, everybody actor's dream. Oh, to go to Hollywood. We had um, a very... Uh, Jean Simmons, do you remember Jean Simmons? A big, a big, she was a big star in, in Hollywood uh, back in the 1950s, 60s. Things. Anyway, she went to the same, same school and um, uh, she was over there. Uh, but of course, they had cast, I, I think, a bit like for us, they had cast for an English actress. And she got the part and she was flown to Hollywood and she stayed in Hollywood for many years doing many, many films with all the, with all the big names. And anyway, so to be told that we were being flown to Hollywood, I'm going to Hollywood? <laughs> yes, it'll be, you'll be living in, in uh, Beverly Hills. And, you know, you just think, oh my goodness, is this happening to me? It, it can't be for real, can it? It was just like a dream, a dream come true. 
And I remember the night that uh, we'd been having dinner in London and they confirmed with me that I had been chosen to play Joy. And I drove home and I got home, I had a, a green mini. And I drove home, I thought, what am I gonna do with my car? <laughs> I drove home and my mother, because I was living at home uh, then, and um, my mother was, was waiting well, she'd gone to bed, she was in bed. And I went in and I knocked on her bedroom door and I opened the door and she'd often fall asleep with the light on. But anyway, I said, are you awake? And she said, yeah, 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 how did it go? And I opened the door. She just looked at my face and she said, you got it, didn't you? You're going to Hollywood, aren't you? <laughs> I said, but you can't tell anyone. You mustn't do, we have to keep it a secret for for a few days, they wanted to announce it to the press once they had finally decided on everyone. So, so anyway, yeah, I mean, being going to Hollywood when you're when you're just a, a young a young actress, it's just like a dream come true. Now it happens more often. You know, people do go out to Hollywood more often. I think it's easier for you to be cast and go out to 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 different parts of the world to to work. Um, so mind you now, the UK, I mean, I don't live in the UK, but the UK, of course, they've done Brexit, haven't they? Yeah. That, I, I don't know whether that'll make it difficult. It's making it more difficult for musicians and theatre productions to go touring around Europe and everywhere because there's too much paperwork, too, it's too complicated. So a lot of them now are having to cancel their tours. A lot of the musicians, wow. Elton John, I think, has cancelled a tour because he can't take his team with him, he would have to use Europe. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want to hear, hear no, all it's, of that. It's, no, but, it's fascinating. But, but yeah, so, no, it was a dream come true for me. I mean, I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So yeah, lovely, lovely. <laughs> what was it like when they announced it in the press? Like, that's kind of a big deal. It, it, trying to get the, the audience to understand back then, well, oh, this yeah. was a big deal. It was a big deal, a very big deal, because it's not that it just appeared in the newspapers. It had been building up to it right. for you know, auditioning. The, the, the producers are coming over to London to cast for this TV series. It had been in the newspapers building up. So the newspapers were waiting to know who was going to be flown to, to Hollywood. So, of course, when they announced it, well, we all had to be there for the photographs and the you know, the normal, the normal sort of setup of right. uh, photographs and everything, which we did loads of, absolutely loads of, as you can imagine. Uh, and of course, then it was all, all, in, all in the newspapers. Okay, I had appeared on television in England uh, a few times be, before that. So uh, my face was not well known, but it was familiar, if you know what I mean. So, I oh, weren't you in such and such? <laughs> it, was, it was like that. But of course, when you appear in the newspaper, the amount of times that you did then, then of course, it was just like, oh, Caroline's going to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> and my friends, were, my friends were wonderful, you know, lots of pats on the back and, and celebration. Up at the pub, you know. <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. How yeah. long were you in LA filming the show? Sorry? How long were you in LA filming the show? Uh, we were there. We were there for quite a few months. For I think, I can't remember when we were flown out. It was at least six months, at oh. least, uh, if not more. Um, uh, and, but of course, the, the, our contract was for six months renewable because they had to renew our visas and work permits and everything. So uh, that's when they said, OK, you can go back home for Christmas and then we'll, we'll have you back out again after. So we said, OK, and off we went. But we never kept, went back again. They never asked us to go back again because Colombia had financial problems. We were going to do the film. And sadly, very, very sadly, that never happened. Uh, not because they didn't want to do the film, but because Columbia had uh, financial problems, money problems. They eventually went bankrupt. 
and closed down, you know, Columbia Pictures. Yeah. So that was the end of that. So it never happened, um, which is sad in a way. Uh, but anyway, you know, things happen in life for a reason and we move on. But yeah. Did you do public <laughs> appearances? As uh, did you, in did America, you all... yeah. Oh, we did a tour, uh, which was unbelievable because wherever we went, we, we were mobbed, basically. Uh, okay, it was all very well planned, and we appeared in, in different, in different uh, cities, flying here, flying there, big limousine, chauffeur-driven. Oh. You know, we even had, I remember, I can't remember where it was. We had been somewhere. We had to get a plane then um, at the end of the day onto the next, the next location, the next city. And... Uh, we had a we were booked on this flight but we were late so we had this great big you know these big black uh cadillac uh driving us everywhere and this cadillac um had to drive us to the airport but we were going to miss the plane so there was phone calls being in the car driving along suddenly the police sirens appear and we're thinking oh my god you know now they're going to stop us what well, no, we were having a police escort. The plane was on the tarmac, ready to take us. They had apologized to all the passengers, saying, we're waiting for some very important, uh, important uh, clients to, to come on the plane. I mean, you know, you just think, wow, this is mine, all for us. You know, you just, you just couldn't believe it. Uh, so yeah, we had some wonderful experiences. We really, really did. Anyway, the plane waited for us. We got on the plane and we made our next appearance the next day, wherever it was, I can't remember now. <laughs> what were those appearances? Were, was it, were you singing or were you just meeting fans? Uh, sometimes we were singing on TV programs oh. in different, different states. Sometimes it was just appearances in, uh, in different locations uh, and, you know, autograph signing or photographs or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, we, we appeared in, on Bandstand and uh, oh, one, or two other, yeah, one or two other programs. We were also in New York for quite a few days and that was quite hectic, especially when you had bomb scares <laughs> and you're oh. on the fifth floor you know that sort of thing so um we were we were doing all sorts of different appearances we did the macy's parade of course in new york which was lovely it was bloody cold freezing yeah I, I i got to do it a couple two times myself and yes oh, it's, yeah. it's great fun though isn't it great uh, fun the energy uh, of new york is amazing it is. It's not, personally, it's not a place I would want to live. <laughs> um, but, you know, everything there is so fast, and I presume it still is. So, I mean, London was always fast, but New York made London look slow, if you know, the, the pace <laughs> of life. Uh, it, was, it was absolutely mind-blowing, absolutely incredible. Yeah, we went to, obviously, um, one or two, one or two uh, venues as well, and restaurants, the famous restaurants. And no, we had a great time and appearances as well, obviously in New York. So yeah, we did radio programs, TV programs, signings, press conferences, you name it, we, we did it all, we did it all. And, and did you ever think, you know, I almost didn't go to that audition. Did, did, did you yes. ever? <laughs> All the time, all the time. When I think about it, if I had, I mean, that changed my life. Uh, it was such a wonderful experience. If I hadn't, if it hadn't been for my friend, I just felt so guilty because my friend didn't get it. She wasn't asked to go back, but you know, she was in the same business even at that age. So we, we knew how it worked sort of thing. And, uh, and she was a very good friend of mine. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely. If she hadn't dragged me along, I mean, she really had to persuade me to go along. And um, so yeah, you know, life, you never know, life is full of surprises. And I just, every day, I, I, I thank God that I've been so lucky and happy in my life. And I still am now. Uh, I live in a wonderful place. I've got my horses here with me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky. I've, I've been lucky all my life. And I've 
you know, thank you for looking after me. Please, God, may, may it continue. You know, good health. Obviously, at the moment now, the world is having a, a, a very, very difficult time. And please, God, may you and I and as many, you know, everybody else not come down with this, uh, this terrible disease. Let's just get it stopped as quickly as possible. So have you had the, have you had the vaccine yet? I have not. I uh, have not. No, me neither. I think uh, my turn, I think, will come up in April, I think. They're, uh, they're, they're doing it. I'm on the next stage. Okay. The I'm, next signed stage. Up. I'm signed up for it, but we haven't hit that, that stage. Oh, you can sign up for it? Yes, you can sign up oh, for it. You can register think... for it, and then they put you in a group. And... Right, okay. Now, I think <clears throat> here we've got national health system. Uh, so you automatically, they will just contact you when your time is up and, and say, okay, you have to go here or come in and, and we'll give you the vacuna. If you turn it down, well, you turn it down. Right. So, so, yeah. So what did so, you do after the bugaloos? What did I do after the bugaloos? Well, uh, we're back in London and uh, waiting to see if we were going to go back and nothing happened. <clears throat> and then uh, I spoke with my agent and we said, well, we may as well, we may as well uh, go along for one or two auditions or interviews and, and see what happens. So as soon as we, we said that, I went along to audition or to interview um, for a TV series, another children's TV series, but completely different. It was um, adventure, a more serious, with spies and, and army and helicopters and horses and, and goodness knows what else. So I went along to audition for that. That was a TV series, and I got the part of that. And uh, that, of course, then I just said, well, I'll accept, accept it. We've been trying to contact to see if we were going to go back for, for the for the crafts for the production right. of but you know just wait just wait nothing nothing but it, it's, how long do you wait you know right. it, then april we've gone back into well the end of december okay for christmas but how long do you wait you know you want to be working you want to keep busy and, and active so anyway uh the contract with the Crofts hadn't been renewed at that time. So I just said, okay, there's nothing to tie me legally to, to the Crofts. So I, so I accepted that and started filming that, I think, in June or May or June or something like that. That was Riding Horses, which I've always loved, and, uh, and whatever. And so yeah, then after that, I got a, a theatre production and then another theatre. I did lots and lots of theatre. Which, to be honest, I've always loved the theatre. Probably, I just love hearing that hear, that feedback from from the audience. With television, you don't have well, you can have a live audience with another with some of them. If it's a comedy, you have a live audience very often in the studio when you're filming uh, a TV comedy, which is great. But when you're doing a TV series, uh, especially like for Martha Ray playing the co comedy part. There was no feedback, which right. makes it more difficult. But when you're on the stage, if you get a laugh with a line, it sort of helps you. It sort of gives you the incentive to, to I don't know, it's, it's just magical to hear. The, or the people clapping at the end of a production, it's just magical. I mean, maybe you, you've had that experience. You've been in the Macy's Parade and obviously you're in, in the business. Yeah, I toured with Barney for, for five years. So, oh, right. Yeah, all around the world. So I know exactly what you're talking about. It is. It's wonderful, isn't it? Hearing that people people are enjoying themselves and, and whatever. For, for me, that's magic. Absolutely magic. And another magical thing, which I always love when you're in a musical, is before the curtain goes up at the very beginning, is hearing the orchestra tune up, getting prepared. I love all that mixture of different is instruments, all preparing, tuning up their instruments, ready for the, for the big show. That always sends hairs on the back of my neck going up. I love it. It's, it's just magic. It's just absolute magic. Lovely. So, so yeah. But what are, apart what, from, 
Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Go, no, please go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, Big John still lives in America. He, he lives in Los Angeles, I think. Uh, John is in, is in England, in the UK, and I speak with him occasionally. And uh, he's okay. He carried on in the music business. And now I think he does more just recordings and, and production. He doesn't perform anymore. He used to tour Europe a lot. And Wayne, uh, Wayne, he's a bit of a recluse. I don't know what Wayne is up to. Um, so he sort of hid away. When, he, when we went back, he did a couple of TV series that I know of. Maybe he did more. Uh, but he, he then went off, I think, to Italy for a while and sort of disappeared off the scene for a while and in in this business if you disappear off the scene for a while you sort of get forgotten you know people forget you and then they find somebody else and you know you're sort of there's always somebody else out there better than you are <laughs> as i always say so so yeah uh, they're they're all in as i say john's in america wayne and little john are in are in the uk in england and i'm in spain and, uh, you know, it's all, all uh, international now, isn't it? I, lo I love it. What are some of your favorite memories from those times on the Bugaloos? From the Bugaloos, I think, well, the memory that, that stands out is seeing the set, is what I mentioned before. Yeah. I was just mind blown when I walked on the set and saw the magic of it. It was just incredible. That always stays on my mind. Uh, another thing was uh, the director, <laughs> Tony Charmley, who sadly passed away recently. Uh, he used to get, you know, like all directors, he wants to get on and carry on with the job. But I always remember him jumping up and down, because I think he was a dancer as well, or done many, many musicals. He used to say, come on, come on, come on, time is money, time is money. He said, oh, all right, here we go. <laughs> That always sticks with me. Uh, so there's so many memories. I mean, so many memories and wonderful memories. And Martha Ray. I remember that uh, we went up to her house uh, in the canyon for, for dinner one night in a house. She was a charming lady. She was, apart from being very funny and entertaining, she was a lovely lady. And we went to her house for dinner one night. We saw her photographs on her wall. For her, her special photographs uh perhaps receiving an award or with somebody well known i can't remember what we ate but that didn't matter yeah <laughs> uh that stays in my mind oh so many memories i remember going to palm springs and being mobbed on my birthday uh, and uh, i can remember as well and i've got one or two photographs of of the fans you know when we were doing the tour and coming up and us signing, signing our autographs for their faces. And I'm happy to say I've got one or two photographs of that. So that brings back those, those happy times, you know, making all these people so, so happy to see you and to, to enjoy what, what you've been doing and, uh, and everything. So that's very, very special, very, very special. Unfortunately, the fan mail, we didn't deal with. Uh, and we had, apparently, we had thousands and thousands, well, you can imagine, of uh, uh, letters and, and everything. Um, but that was held, that was looked after by, by a department. Obviously, we didn't have the time or whatever to, to do all that. I think at one time, we went into the, into the, went to the place where they were dealing with it. And there was just masses of uh, mail on the table from all these people writing to us. Because at the end of the program, it says, don't forget to write, you know, or something like that. Right. Of course, they all did. <laughs> that, of the millions of them. But of course, a lot of them never got any reply, which is apparently, this is what I heard after, which was, was a shame. But, uh, but anyway, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that happened on other programs as well. But that now with technology, isn't it? Facebook, oh, everything is just wonderful. It's just, it's just really lovely. It just makes everybody much more accessible. 
uh, and I, I, first of all, with my Facebook page, I did it, I did one page where I didn't, not to be personally in contact with them. Sure. Um, and I thought, that's such a shame. All these people are saying, well, so my Facebook page, they can write to me. They can send me oh, messages right. as they do. It's become like a full-time job almost. <laughs> but right. but it, it's lovely. And they, they tell you things that you had forgotten from way back then. Or they tell you things that, that at that time they were going through a bad time at home uh, for personal problems. And that we had managed to, you know, change their lives basically for the better. Now that, that is really special. That is really, really heartwarming. And uh, lovely to hear, lovely to hear. And I've heard many, many stories like that from, from the fans. So yeah, lovely, lovely memories. Well, I can't thank you enough. You have brought so many smiles to my life. <laughs> and they've come back again today. It's just been such a pleasure to get to talk to you, Caroline. Well, it was my pleasure. It's, uh, it's you know, it's, brings back the memories, doesn't it, um, and everything. I mean, you you as well obviously have many wonderful memories, and sometimes you forget them yeah. until you speak to somebody, and then they come, then they start coming back again. So uh, so has anybody interviewed you yet? <laughs> I, I've, I've done a few of them. That's kind of where this started, is I got asked to do a few podcasts. Right. And I started realizing I knew there was a lot of people that had stories like mine and I wanted to talk to them. And that's kind of where this show started. Yeah, from. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And the, well, I never thought I'd get to be able to sing the Bugaloo theme song. <laughs> to joy. I, I'm just, I'm so happy. You remember the words. So many oh, people. <laughs> I've been singing them around the house here. <laughs> my, my fiance and the kids are like, oh my goodness, what is this show? I'm like, you have to know the Bugaloos. Yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely. You remember the words. So many people do remember the words better than I do. I've forgotten. I was trying to sing Senses of the World the other day. And after about the first two lines, I thought, I can't remember the rest. Of it. <laughs> terrible, terrible. But, but anyway. I mean, you could never forget the theme song. No, and, and the words, you know, you just think, one minute, this line, whatever. No, it's, I, I love that song. I always did love that song. It's very, very, very special. And the words of it, well, to all the songs, the words are very special, you know, for a friend. And, and uh, when I think about the, the happy birthday, even, you know, everybody knows the songs of the happy birthday. Or a lot of people remember the song of happy birthday. Uh, that you can imagine on my birthday that gets sent to me a lot. Oh, I'll people. bet. <laughs> I'll bet. So yeah, but well, anyway, it's been you. great talking to you. Um, I hope you you thaw out very soon and don't have any more problems with electricity. So uh, so yeah, and and good luck with the future for you as well. Thank you, and same to you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, won't you? You too, you too. Thank you Thank so much for watching Purple Roads. This has been so much fun. And remember, yeah. keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your Purple <laughs> Road. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thank you.